Well, guys, I've gone and done another thing. Another thing which I absolutely should not have done, and I'm kind of actually ticked off at myself for doing it because it's not like I don't have anything else to do. However, it became a thing last night, and I'm not feeling well today, and this is helping me feel better. I should be cleaning the kitchen and the bathroom, but we see how my morning has gone. I just wanted to share this with you because this is my new obsession. I swear to God, this will probably be done faster than anyone would have ever given me credit for, simply because it is a cross-stitch that, like, ticks all the boxes for me. As if I needed any more patterns, I placed an order with Ms. Karen Kluba of Rosewood Manor herself, and this is my new obsession. I'm trying to see if I can get where that light's not glaring on it for you to see it. It's called Quaker Diamonds. Um, it's not a new pattern. She designed it in 2009, but I have just recently become obsessed. Ignore that. That's probably the 25th. Uh... Oh, go away. We don't want any. The 25th... Um robocall I've gotten today. Once the answering machine kicks in, it'll stop. Because Bill knows to call me on my cell phone, so I never answer my landline. Anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted, what was I trying to say? I was trying to say, this is not a new pattern, um, but this is new to me. I saw it online when I was looking for some thread that I needed to finish something else, and I just fell in love with it. I have recently come to the conclusion that Quaker patterns with these geometric motifs are my, they're my favorite kind of thing to stitch. Um, I love them because if you make a mistake, it's easier to, A, it's easier to see where your mistake is, and B, it's easier to fix because you're not going to have a diamond if you skip a stitch or something. So you're going to see right away where you made your mistake. So, Quaker Diamonds, Karen Kluba, yes. I got my package in the mail from her the other day, and I actually ordered several patterns of hers, um, which I'll show in my next floss tube video. But this was the one that I ordered the thread pack and the fabric for all at the same time. So this one was actually ready to go. The other couple of patterns I ordered, I ordered the fabric for them, but I don't have the thread, so thank goodness for that, or I probably would have tried to start all the things. But can you not just drool over the deliciousness that is Valdani silk? I just, I can't even. I, like I said, today's Thursday. I probably received this in the mail on Monday night. And I unpacked everything and, you know, just had it sitting in my stash. I was like, okay, not going to do it. I don't need another start. Can't do it. Not going to do it. Last night, I wasn't feeling too well. And I was just looking at it. And I was like, screw it. I'm starting it. I mean, what's the point of having cross-stitch if you don't do it, right? I mean, there may be 50,000 things that I don't get done before I die. But at least I will have fun while I'm still here. Which leads to the question that most cross-stitchers get asked, are you a process stitcher or a product stitcher? Meaning, do you stitch because you love the process of stitching or do you stitch to get things finished because you love the final product? Clearly, I'm a process stitcher. I've known that about myself for a long time. I'm not even going to count my whips because, you know, I don't even want to know how many unfinished projects I have. Just... It, it's better for my sanity if I don't know. So here's the progress I've made. And I am absolutely freaking obsessed with this thread. Like I said, it's Valdani. It's from Romania. It's three-strand silk floss. So unlike the DMC I usually use, which is six-stranded and you separate out and you just use one strand, you use all three strands on this 28-count fabric unless you're doing the petite stitches, which are for the lowercase letters in the sampler alphabet. Um, let me see if I can get it close enough for you to see that without the light going weird. Um, I don't know if you can see how small that lowercase i is, 
but that's because this is 28 count fabric and it's stitched over one with one strand of this silk floss. Now, I know that sounds esoteric and weird to people who don't stitch. What do you mean over one, over two, whatever. So I thought I'd do a little diagram and try to show you what I mean. Now, when you stitch on regular Ada cross stitch fabric, you just have your holes like this and you stitch from the bottom left to the top right and you stitch all your first leg of your stitches and then you come back and you cross over. You want all your stitches to go the same direction. Uh, 14 count means that there's 14 squares per inch um, and Ada fabric is the most commonly used fabric for beginners, although plenty of people use it their whole stitching life. I still have a lot of Ada fabric I'm stitching on and it's just a different dynamic than stitching on linen. Now, linen, 28 count linen, which is what this piece calls for, it's pretty much the same equivalent as stitching on 14 count Ada, except you're stitching over two threads. So your square that you're stitching in will have nine holes as opposed to just the four. And it's called stitching over two because you skip that hole in the middle. So you're going over two threads when you put your leg of your cross in. And then you go back and you stitch. So there's going to be that hole in the middle that you skip. Now, a reason a lot of cross stitchers like um, linen versus Ada is if you're doing something with fractional stitches. Let's say like my poor mom was stitching dragonflies and she was trying to do half stitches on Ada, which you can do, but it's easier on linen because you have that center hole. So if you're trying to do a half stitch, you've got that hole to put the thread in and you're not just trying to poke through the fabric. But anyway, so yes, 28 squares per inch, but you're stitching over two. So when you stitch over one, it's pretty much, you know, you've got your nine holes like you do when you're just stitching over two. But instead of going up to that second hole, you stop at the first hole like you're stitching on Ada. So it makes the stitch very, very tiny, which is the difference here in my piece between the capital I and the lowercase i. You know, that's the whole, well, let me see. There we go. It's not blurry now. That's the whole difference between the capital I and the lowercase i there is, is how many threads you stitch over. Um, Ms. Klubo, when she designed this, said she would not stitch it on anything, any higher count with this particular thread than 28 because like I said you're using three strands in these stitches uh, but look at that color variation believe it or not that is just one thread that's just one thread color even though it looks like there's two you've got that lighter color in the side lower left hand side and then in the top there but that's all on color that is this beauty called washed orange which is this one and it's got like all these little variegations in it. So it looks like you're using a bunch of different thread, but you're really only using one strand out of the ball of thread. Um, so anyway, just wanted to tell you in case you haven't already wondered, I have officially lost my mind. Um, not sure where it went. I think it's trying to go on vacation without me. It's more sick of Corona quarantine than I am. So yeah. We'll see how it goes. Karen Kluba's Quaker Diamonds. I'm working on that pretty peachy colored one up top. And I'll probably do the one. This is actually a smaller pattern than most of hers. It's only six pages. So I'll probably do the one right beneath it where the J is next. But we'll see. Just thought you'd want to know. I've lost my mind.